Hi guys and welcome to this episode of the Comedy Defect Podcast. My name is Winter Fonander, I'm a comedian and this is my show. Those of you that know the show, welcome. Those of you that don't know the show, well, thanks for joining us. This is episode 43 with core writer and very funny comedian in his own right, Adam Vincent. He's Australian, I got him on the show and I didn't want to introduce him to the show and stop the flow of the conversation because as soon as he came and we pressed record we were in it so the conversation flowed really nicely i really enjoyed this one it was great he's such an easygoing chilled out guy very funny man as well he is taking a show to the brighton fringe which is the first two days of the festival and that is at the quadrant he's also taking that show up to the edinburgh fringe and that will be an espionage at 4.15, so go check it out, go find him on Facebook, go follow him on Twitter, and go and see him live, because that's the stuff that he's going to be hammering out and taking to the fringes, very funny guy, really enjoyed this chat, it was really good fun, well what have I been doing, I've been having some really great gigs, I've been writing kids shows, I've got about 20 minutes of my half an hour kids show together, and it's going good, but you know, sometimes you're doing some things, and you're like, oh, where did my life go wrong? I have introduced a puppet to the act, just for the kids show, and it seems to be going great, it's connecting with the kids an awful lot, and I'm really enjoying it, it's, it's something completely different, it's terrifying, but that is where it needs to live, and that's, that's, the, that's the joy, isn't it? It's bringing back the terror, but the joy is in the terror. I'm still hammering out my hour fringe show, Tolerance and details are available on my website, which is being updated by Danny Clives. Details of the previews that are going to be around the country are on my website, which is winterphonander.com. If you want to follow this podcast, we're on Twitter. Go to Twitter, type in The Comedy Defect, and you can follow us there, or you can follow me at winterphonander. But if you want to support this podcast, you can go to Patreon, type in The Comedy Defect Podcast, and you can make a donation of as little as a pound, or whatever you feel this podcast is worth. And those of you that do donate, thank you, because you're paying for the people that can't. And those of you that can't donate, hey, look, don't worry about it. Just share your favorite episode. Leave us a nice, honest review, because it really helps. It tells people where we are and what we're up to. Uh, But I'm not really going to talk much more than that, because things are going great at the moment. So look, uh, I don't want to complain. Let's not complain. This is a great episode with a very funny comedian and co-writer of The Third Leg, Adam Vincent. Enjoy. Because the world so, tries to be so slick, we're always trying to mm. be something we're not. Mm. What got you into it? I'm going to interview you. Yeah, it's fine. It's your podcast there. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, like, I want to see if I can do one, right? Because yeah. I've heard other ones, and I was like, oh, I can do better than that. I can talk. Yeah. I don't have a problem. And it also, it's, it releases my, my fear and also improves my listening. Yes. It also improves my relatability to other people. When I meet people for real in the outside world, I go, oh, how's it going, man? Yeah, okay, cool. And then just sit there in state and go, okay, and I'm, I'm not going to overreach. I'm not going to underreach. Yeah. I'm just going to try and meet them at the same level so we can properly connect. And it's really helped me with loads of different things, you know? Interesting. Yeah, it's, it is. It's like you come a, come a conversation, not saying a, a Zen master, come, I'm, I'm going to have nothing to say now, Adam. That's but fine. like, you know, it's like no, that I'm kind of, because uh, I'm really crap with, with that it, first interactions and with people. Yeah. You know? And that's why when I first started it, I had people that I knew on. You yes. Know? I met you once. And yes, we're another king. We were chatting away fine, and I yeah. thought this won't be a problem, you know. Yeah. So I thought, like, when I started, I thought I had people, and I know. And then when people come on, they give an awful lot more sometimes than they thought they would give. You know, they, yes. they follow that thought, and like, whoa, okay, and that's great. Not that I want to like extrapolate like all of your darkest thoughts, no, I understand. but it's like that kind of. It's really interesting to see what people will will talk about in a one on one situation. And it's just, and, and, and I, what I will too, you know, I mean, I overshare horrendously sometimes, but it's like a great insight into the human interactions and, and you know, communication. Yeah, I just really, I'm really enjoying it. And to be honest, some of the stuff that you talk about, really, there's some bits in there, I'm like, oh, that's a great little bit, I, I've never thought of that. Yeah, of course. And it's like, it can be like a writing session, because, you, you know, you riff on something, you go, oh, great, what about this? And you go, yeah, yeah, I never thought of that. And, like, and, then, and then you both banter, it's like, and then you know whose idea it was. I hope it was your idea to start with. <laughs> you know? well, that's the rule, isn't it? It's your it. premise. That you is get it. It. Your premise, you get it. That's the main thing. So yeah. it's been really good, you know? I've been like taking little bits going, oh yeah, what about this? And then that. I say meeting different people as well and getting to know people that I know on the circuit mm-hmm. that I've really liked and have kind of connected with to start with and gone, okay, no, this person seems really cool. 
I could sit in an hour for an hour and like a quarter talking to them about themselves and you know what they did and where they come from because then you get to know them a little bit better. Absolutely, you know? yeah. and that's it. What I love about it is that you had it and you did it because so many people must. Sit, and I'm the biggest one for this. Is mm-hmm. you have the idea I should do a podcast, yeah, and then it's the next step. Yeah, that's the hard that's bit. It. Yeah, that's it. Because like I mean, look, bro, I get I get transfixed with fear as well. Like with with, with I get apprehensive before I do these things. I go, well, shit, I don't know how this is going to go. <laughs> shit, how many I met Adam once? I mean, this might, this might be... This could have been... This could be bad, because mm. we met at that gig. You know, I did that gig again. Mm. Mm. I, I, I did my first preview for Edinburgh just last week at that gig, mm-hmm. and it was just as awkward as it was the first time we did it. I uh, keep it at a level awkwardness. <laughs> Man, i got to say, the guy... I had 16 people in there, and I mm. thought, this is going to be good. Mm-hmm. I've got, so I, can, I, can, I can get something out of 16 people. Mm. And then they had four acts on in the first half of the break. Then me doing my hour, and the second act on, I don't want to. I don't even know his name. He just ran out of gear. He wasn't being. He wasn't doing it all well. Mm. But then he ended, or he, his last two minutes included a question to the audience: Can anyone? Does anyone have any Netflix recommendations? But there was no. There was no bit there. There was no punchline. And people are just looking at each other. Going, Wait, did, he, did he just ask us? A what? question. Yeah. <laughs> like doing, I'm filling gaps for him. Yeah, yeah, but still. Yeah, yeah. I Whoa. couldn't believe it. And they, what? I saw eight Whoa. people walked out, and I saw I'm left there going, "Well, because I've, I've worked all day mm. in London I've, towards this hour, the first preview, mm. and the guys just killed the room. Oh, no. I couldn't believe it. I was so livid. Mm. But of course, he comes up and after, and I didn't say well done, but. He said, oh, there's plenty of jokes left in there. I was like, there really isn't. But I didn't, my, <laughs> my biggest problem was I, and what I hate about myself the most is I didn't say to him, don't ever do that again. Yeah. I didn't have the balls. I know. And I cursed him mm. all the way home. Mm. Fuck you, you mm. fucking try hard you, prick. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't have the guts to say it to his face. No, I don't, I get that as well sometimes. You know, when you like, I, I did, there's that Luton Hat Factory gig. In, in Luton and it's like you know when, when you go up downstairs and it's um, it's really it's a really lovely room you know what I mean no no I haven't done that there was a one in, in Luton and I, and I did it like about maybe about a year ago right yeah and I tanked I tanked hard big time I, I, I drove it completely into the ground and you know you're just like forgetting punchlines and you're putting yeah. the wrong order and I was like one of those nights when I had no brain you know we sit at home writing notes and you're like and all these other jokes come into your head and you're like oh yeah. no they're pushing the old jokes out yeah. and that's what happened and I was like okay so I'm going and I'm like oh and none of it was flowing or whatever and I was getting really tense and I, I, they could see I was getting tense and I was like alright walked off went okay did it the other night for Patrick's Day right mm-hmm. and I had a great time I was like great happy days right? really loved every moment and someone came up to me afterwards and said I hope you don't mind me saying this that was way better than the last time <laughs> I was like I, like, I respect that I said I've got self-awareness I know I was shit the last time you know but it's it's having that self-awareness isn't it and that guy obviously didn't really have any of that self-awareness to kind of to draw from but you just feel that it's it's, very, it's so raw isn't it when they come off like that they're going to yeah, not really take it well I wouldn't no. oh, yeah you can't mm. critique people afterwards mm. but I mean this guy was beyond critique this guy oh, was God. Just, that was just a prick move Who's got Netflix recommendations? Oh man, that's sick. Because I know you started. I had Yanni uh, just low on here as well. And oh, you yeah. started with him, haven't you? I think I emceed his first ever gig. Right, yeah, yeah. that's it. On Australia, obviously. yes. Yeah. Where else was that again? I started in Adelaide, right. and then I when I was nineteen, I believe, yeah, ninety six, mm. and then I uh, Yanni, I would have met him in Melbourne. I moved to Melbourne when I was you know sort of. 98, I think. Right. Yeah, Mad. after a couple of years. Yeah. And so you've done like, how many hours have you got on your belt at this stage? And like solo shows? Yeah. I, I wouldn't know, to be honest. Whoa. I think, well, no, that's not to say that I've got like 50, I just, off the top of my head, I, yeah. I'd say I've probably attempted seven solo, seven or eight, oh. maybe nine solo shows. Yeah. Oh, how many of those are am I happy about that I would go, yep, yeah, I'll sign off on, or maybe three or four. Mm-hmm. That's good though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you try and, Get better each time. Always, it's, it's always a work in progress, isn't it? It's always you're always trying to get better every time. One hundred percent, yeah. Mm-hmm. But also, and you've but your voice changes as well. So you, who I was when I was twenty, I, I knew nothing then, and mm-hmm. all my stuff was a bit more uh, crowd pleasing. How can I get these people to like <laughs> me? And now I don't really care. If, mm-hmm. you know, I want them to like me, but I'm not going to. There's certain things I won't do yeah. to make that happen. And you know, the comedy callus has built up so much now that you're like, well, you know, take it or leave it. This is what I'm doing. Yeah, well, that's what you aim for, mm-hmm. isn't it? That's that, mm-hmm. that zen state. I will do the work. I've done the work. I've done all the writing. I've done the performing. I'm here now. Yeah. If you like me, you like me. If you don't, that's you it. don't. 
And the, 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 as you said, the voice changes in like the, the desperation, and the voice goes away. <laughs> you hope so, yeah. And when it comes back, that's that's what. Like, yeah. what some people go, "What? Well, it's a death in comedy." And for yeah. me, the death is. It's not when they don't like you at all, because that's fine. It's when you're trying to get them to like you. That's the, for me, that's the worst that could happen. Mm-hmm. I hate that yeah. neediness. Mm-hmm. It's like, I explain it like spiritual donkey calm. Mm-hmm. You know, when you, the comedy as a whole for me is, and there's different levels. Like when you start, you just want to mm-hmm. get people to, comfortable to be on stage is a massive thing. Mm-hmm. Just to, to get up and say hi and yeah. try and make them up is a mm-hmm. huge step. And then you've got to go through after a couple of years, the first two years, I don't know, how many years have you been going? Five. So did you notice this? So I'll speak to other comics about this. Yeah. The first two are amazing. Mm. You're meeting yeah. new people, yeah. new influences. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of, go, oh, we're serious now. Yeah. yeah. Then the, then the rule gets pulled out from under you. You go, no, actually, you, you, don't, have, you don't have this at all. You're totally yes. wrong. The yeah. arrogance is there in the first two years. Like, oh, I'm amazing at this. And then you're like, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm really not amazing at this. I was just like in my head of like, of just, of just bump, being bombarded with my own, with adrenaline. Going, I am amazing at this. <laughs> your brain <brother, laughs> telling you, your adrenaline's telling you, and you're not, you're not, you're completely shielded from all of any uh, any judgment. It's amazing, isn't it? That 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 shield of of, of oh, non-judgment. No, I see, I had a I, oh I, really? Did I, you? I thought I was, yeah, I thought I was rubbish, and I was rubbish. Yeah. Um, for, yeah, I didn't get. I think it took me nine months to have a gig right. where I felt comfortable. And if, but even that now would be might be a rubbish gig. But yeah. I'd, I never had that, but the first two years was all these people for me meeting these great comics and yeah. doing this new scene. And after that, it's, then you start seeing people that you started with. That's which for me is like the next stage yeah. is where you see them go ahead of you or whatever. And you have to learn to deal with other people's success, which is a really it's initially can be quite, a, if we're being honest, can be hard, but it takes some time. But now, I mean, now I'm, I, I celebrate everyone's success. Mm-hmm. I think it's brilliant, but yeah. yeah. So I hope you've gone up another level too. Yeah, that's it. You've got to be zen about that too. You know, you're right. You've got to feel your own pace. You can't, yeah, 100%. You can't go their pace. Yeah. They've got something else that maybe other people wanted or whatever it is, you know, that's it. And you're just maybe, you know, sharpening your tools for the next time you kind of hit that moment. I'm, yeah, now I'm just grateful for every bit of stage time or mm. the fact that I can still do it professionally and, and, mm. and support my family. But uh, yes, yeah, so other people's success is brilliant and I just... Someone had a great saying. Is sometimes that yeah, I just hope they touch you on the way up. Yeah, you know, that's it. There's so many people, yeah, yeah. great acts have gone past me. Yeah. So when did you come to the UK then? I first came here in 2004. I was here for about 10 months, mm-hmm. and that was a really great learning curve because I got to see different influences, and I did a lot of. I stayed in London for mm-hmm. that time. When I went back to Australia, I re I had a much stronger work ethic. Mm-hmm. I was like writing three, four hours a day. Mm-hmm. I had done a couple of solo shows before that, but in, in no way was I ready. But I, I spent two years just back in Australia after that time in London, writing every day, performing as much as I could, and you know, the improvement was there. Mm-hmm. But when I came back for the second time was in 2011. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On a wing and a prayer, my wife and I had a young son. Mm-hmm. We thought before he gets to school, mm-hmm. let's just see. Because I'd always wanted to come back and... She was a, she's English and Australian, so she could live here, and then I could live here with a spousal visa. So, great. yes, yeah, totally yeah. scored there. Married yeah. the right one. Swish. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. so uh, we came over here and we moved to Tunbridge Wells. Quickly moved out of because oh, right. yeah, why is that? It's expensive. Is it? Yeah, yeah. and it's every gig I was doing, I, well, I'd have to drive all the way around the M25 oh, right. and up north, and then as soon yeah. as we moved to Bedford, which was the other side. All my gigs were back down around Tunbridge Wells. It was just a it was like, come on, life. I know, I know. <laughs> the opposite. The bone. Yeah. opposite day. <laughs> yeah, it was annoying. But yeah, um, yeah so we, we moved there in 2000, the start of 2012. I moved to, to lovely Bedford, which um, I have a love-hate relationship with. Yeah, uh, my car broke down in Bedford, actually. Yeah. Did it really? Uh, yeah, it did. The, the water connector came off of the back of the engine, you know, like the little coolant thing, and then yeah. sidetracked there on Sunday. Uh, it was Sunday? No, Saturday night. Just oh, no. on Mother's Day. Awesome. Oh, there you go. Yeah, perfect timing. Oh, you yeah, should have found me out. I could have come and helped you out. Man, never mind. Not that I know anything about cars. <laughs> you just gave me the old tire kick. <laughs> I could have brought you yes. a sandwich, maybe. Yeah, mate, it's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> She's fucked. <laughs> and uh, what's your wife do? Yeah, uh, Nikki is a... She does voiceovers, and mm. but mainly, if we were perfectly honest, she's dedicated the last five years beautifully to our kids. Mm. So she was an actress. She was like on... Does it show you Family Affairs? Remember that? Right, yeah. Yeah, so she was a mm. soap star mm. for a number of years. 
she went back to Australia, which is where we met. She was there for eight years, and then we both came over. But she's done this beautiful sacrificial thing where she's just gone, I want to raise our kids, yeah. which has come with its own pros and cons. But I think being a, a stay-at-home mum is the tough mm. scenario, mainly because of the repetitive nature mm. of the, that task. Yeah. And the kids just drive them. They drive me nuts. God knows what yeah. they're doing. Her. That's it. Yeah, you got kids in stereo, man. You got two kids. I've got two. Right. Yeah, six and four, and a boy and a girl. Yeah, they will strip your identity away quicker, <laughs> than, quicker than you can <laughs> beg for it back. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've noticed, like, on a, on a very small level now. I mean, I'm on the way. I'm, I'm on the way out. Like, I'm, I'm on the way out. I've just managed to, to lock in, get married with when the kids are about to. One's about to leave. Home oh and, man, what a joy! The other one is. It's, it's, okay. it's malleable at the moment right? yes. it's manageable and I'm like yeah. okay that's fine but and I say that now and she's about to hit teenage uh, years so we'll, we'll see how that goes but they are a complete mirror for you and your emotions aren't they do you find I find that they, yeah they, if I am angry mm. they will we'll mimic that yes mm-hmm. absolutely or they just be <laughs> just like, yeah. you know, eyes get bigger like in the like in the uh, cartoons you know they're like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He sends it before you sense it. Yeah, they, 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 that's a very good point. They really do. He, um, Hugo, in particular, he, he's really, oh. he's, yeah, very sensitive. But you know what he's done now is he will, if I say Hugo, don't do this, and I get angry, you know, in a stumpy way. I don't. Know, he will start. He starts. Yeah. Going to punch or kick. He won't do it. He just like that's mm. his, and yeah. it actually really hurts. Yeah. Because he. When he's when he's sort of doesn't he's not touching me physically, yeah. but it's just the fact that he is projecting this yeah. "fuck you" yeah, back totally. to me. It's like oh, okay. he's defending himself. Oh, I'm ready. I'm yeah, ready. yeah, yeah. He's winding up. Yeah, that's it. But the yeah. other thing is, part of me, I, I like that. I like yeah. that he's sticking up for himself. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, punch the head. Come on, son. Punch the head. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Good duck and weave. Duck and weave. Come on, Rocky. <laughs> you start quoting. Uh, you start quoting Stallone. They're like, you know, it's not. How, it's not when you get that guy down. It's how hard you get hit and keep moving forward. <laughs> so I'm chasing chickens in the backyard. Oh, yeah, yeah chickens. No, no. But if I was to train as a boxer, yeah, or... that works. Yeah, big rock with a big, uh, big rope attached to it. You know, over an eve or something like that. Yeah. Good. He's not there. He's such a non-violent little kid. With the 17 year old, is he? Yeah, he's 17. Do you encourage the... Because it sounds like you're a very peaceful kind of yeah, zen guy. Yeah, ch- chilled at moments. So you don't... Do you, how, where's your anger hidden? Like, Mine's you, very uh, forced into a box. <laughs> <laughs> very small, tiny little box. A Rubik's Cube of anger in which sometimes I will ac- accidentally hit an all side which is all coloured, and I go, oh, that's done, and then, then it'll blow. <laughs> right, right, right. But I don't know it's coming. Uh, I, don't, I don't notice the, the build-up, because I, 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 for years, I've convinced myself that I'm completely happy. Yes, uh, right. <laughs> so, but now, with the kids, they're like, no, you're not. You're, this is, this is, I'm showing you on my face what you are. I see. Now I'm like, oh, okay. So I because like say if I've got a lot to do, right? Yeah. Whatever. I'm in. I'm in this end of the cabin doing some stuff, writing whatever it is, and I'm like, oh, I've got all this stuff to get through. I'm doing it now. You know. And I come in, and that moment of I've got all this stuff to do will be on my face. And I'm like, "Mm." I'll come in, and I'm like, and I'll see them like, oh, we need to get out of here. (laughs) That kind of terror. I'm like, I don't realize that I'm bringing terror with me on this face. You know, I'm like, okay, I need to be, and it's teaching me to be more aware of this. Yeah. You know, rather than be like, oh, no, this is normal. This is a normal face because I've lived on my own for so long. That right. Taking this back to the, the the family unit is not the way to go forward or be a, a accessible, communicative human being. So it's that kind of, that's what I'm learning. The me kind of, hey guys, and with this, with this, how you doing? <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a total disconnect between the face and what I'm saying. So it's like, oh, okay. This guy's a bit crazy, you know. That's what they kind of I feel. They're like, sure. oh. but so it's really so. The girl was really um, saw that kind of disconnect between emotions and, and physicality. Yeah, and was like, oh, I don't know, how to, I, I don't know how to work this person, you know, because that's it. So it's kind of mad. But, I, I do. I think. See, I do the total opposite. Yeah. I just go if I'm in a shit mood, I'll be in a shit mood. Right. And I'd rather. Yeah. It's, it's easier in the long run for me to go. Well, I'm an asshole. <laughs> That's great. You know, you know what I mean? Like all the, I cut out all the having to pretend to be somewhere. I fuck that. Mm, right mm, now, mm. I'm an arsehole. Mm, mm. 
Um, that's fair. You're dead an asshole. That's good though. That's I, that's my way healthier. I think because I just shove it in a box. I'm like, no, it's fine. It'll pop up somewhere else. Like when I'm, when I'm buying something random in a shop, and I'm like, <laughs> oh no, look, this is not the, that'll have happened. Okay, right. Well, at least I've got a story out of it. <laughs> you know, You're just going to be like Michael Douglas in Falling Down, <laughs> exactly what? like that. Because I wrote, I'm writing my hour, my first hour, and it's all about that, about the situations that occur when I I have not been honest with myself and gone, this is not the time to speak to me in any in any way or communicate with me any way or be around people in any way. Yeah. And then I've but I've got I've got no I thought that I got no I can deal with this control everything. I'm getting better at that though. Cause right. My, wife, my wife's kind of. It's pretty uh, chilled out and goes, oh, Winter, that's not normal. Okay, right. This is it. Yeah, it's funny. I think a lot of people do that, though. Mm. I think a lot of people are um, going through life like they're writing a Facebook status mm. Mm. where it's not genuine and it's not healthy. I'm not saying that you're doing that. No, no. But um, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Like, and it's scary, really, I think, that we're all suddenly, we're walking around like we're a walking resume mm. rather than... Yeah, I'm having a bad day. Yeah, or that's I'm, it. This is who I am. Do you think our tolerance has gone down? Uh, for, for for what? Other or in, well, our tolerance levels in regard to who we are as individuals and how we look at other people. For example, if you were angry, mm. but you, there was a reason for you to be angry, would I tolerate it? And I think I would, but I think a lot of people wouldn't give you the space to go, mm. okay, he's being angry. Yeah. Or... If someone's, you know, if your kid's misbehaving, are, mm. are we coming down harder? I don't know. Do you think we're, do you think, uh, do you think we're, the, so our tolerance is, is less, do you think? Then? Yes, so I think we're the, the least tolerant as a society we have been for a long time. I think, yeah, I think that's, um, because people are so distracted there by other things as well. It's like, I don't have time for this thing here, right? Because I've got all this stuff to do, which is on my phone, which is always with me every every second of the day. And I think that tolerance also comes from an, a, a massive amount of fear, I think, with the actual social interactions, because we're so in, personally insular with like, okay, I've got this to do, oh, Facebook update, oh, okay, like this. And then before, I remember when I was a kid, or like, well, younger when I saw people with kids, yeah. and they'd be like, could you tell your kid to keep it down there? You know, yeah. no one would dare say that now. Yeah. Because people are so like, oh, you know, you like... It's going to happen. Yeah. I could actually have a physical response for my words that I say out loud. Yes. Now it's or like someone might actually film this, and I um come across as the biggest asshole, the biggest yeah. meme out ever. Yeah. You know, I was like, look at this, and, and, and mix it up and make a, a song, a track out of it, or something. You know, <laughs> and then see it all go off. It's, it's it's so it's like everyone's being policed at every second, aren't they? So yeah, I'd say that most intolerant but yet has to keep it in in check you know like we're we're really pissed off we'll really write a r- terrible Facebook status about it we won't do it in the physical absolutely world, yeah know, that's so. a very good point we won't do it in the in the, in the now mm. all these things are just lists of rage that you you've you've like put on Twitter oh this person next to me on the train and everyone goes yeah I know and everyone just has that moment to, to release that rage in a like or a love or you know or a la- laugh out loud or whatever is that is the only release that's not a real release is it no that is not that's just that's saving it for the next time that something else goes off yeah. you know that's it it's dangerous you know maybe the way that you know voting and things go now that's why maybe people are becoming so right wing because they're shoving that stuff down and then when one ounce of maybe release or maybe control when they can maybe make something different in their lives happens, they go, now, this is the moment. Brexit would be a great example of that. That's it. That's yeah. it, maybe. A lot of people, I think, want to change with mm. Brexit, so they just vote it out. Yeah, oh, it doesn't have everything, but it's got a couple of things. Yeah, uh, yeah, cross yeah. Cross those couple of things off the list. And it was also a fuck you to the left, who mm. were, um, mm. to be honest, were and are, remain to be slightly up there on us. Absolutely. They're more righteous than... Than the righteous, they're, they're more righteous. Beyond. They're just as racist. They're, yeah, they are. There are real issues with with the left. I'm glad that we're on this. Topic. Absolutely, they find a level. <laughs> That's it. Everything finds a level. If you become like it, it all goes yin and yang, isn't it? Really, yeah. one goes up, the other one has to meet. Yeah, you know, so just for, you know, just there's no, there's no like everything now. There's no moderation. It's either one way or the other. Yeah, you know? the centrists. Uh, well, I think they're going to find their voice. Obviously, there's a great comic, Matt Ford, who's got his TV show. Mm. I think he's. I think I could be wrong. Forgive me if you're listening, Matt. If you, if I'm wrong, but 
he's a centrist and he's not, I think he's, yeah. he looks at things very evenly, mm. which is we should do required balance. That's what it is. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, mind you, Blair was a centrist, wasn't he? And he also took us to another nasty war. Yeah, but he's totally out of touch with the real world, anyway, isn't he? Coming yes, from a public school background, and that's that's just like a. The fantasy world we live in, where everything is provided and everything is everything happens. And these are going to be your friends. These are your friends. Your very powerful friends that are going to get you to where you where you're going to be. There's no failure in that. Those groups. Yeah, you know, you, maybe you I don't know. You, uh, that's that feels like it's and I like this lane as well. The whole conspiracy. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I didn't. I didn't know that. Blair, I thought Blair had a. I don't. I don't really know that much about Blair. But coming mm. from Australia, but right. um, is he? So he went to a. What, what public school, public is that it's just like private, school. private. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why you call it public. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, in Australia, pro- public is state, mm. and private's private. Grammar school is it's always another. It's another like you can get you can pass the I think eleven plus or something and get into that. Okay, like right. You, like it's done through tests and like tests. Know, yeah, my I mean, controversially here, my kid um, he goes to an independent school now. We weren't happy with the st- we hadn't we went to an outstanding state school. He basically got lumped in with you're okay, so we're not going. We're not going to put as much time and effort in with you. For example, he would get these books for reading, and he got the same book for like a month. We're like he can, he knows this verbatim. We don't mm. need. Can we have another book? And we had it. Of course, we were reading from ourselves, but mm. we were more worried that they weren't pushing him. Yeah. So we made the decision mid year to take him out and put him into a um, an independent school, mm. and now his reading has just shot through the roof. And it's really sad, for my mind, because every kid deserves that education. Mm. Because he's in a class of, say, 20 kids, and I think there's a, another teacher's exceptional in what she does. She's, you know, I think she's paid, remunerated well because of it. But in the state system, these poor teachers are, they get 30 kids, mm. they might, the, the resources aren't there. Can you coast in that situation? I don't know. Are you? How are the how are the teachers? Um, I know it's a tough job, but are they judged on results? Oh, or? Yeah, like are they judged on on uh, performance? I think they yeah. I think a little bit. I think they are. Right. They get more. They get certain bonuses. I think if they if they you know achieve their targets and stuff and, yeah, and that's, that strikes me as terrible as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, give him the answers and off you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I was always anti private school, but now I'm like, well, I've got to. I've got to yeah. swallow my tongue here a bit yeah, or bite yeah. my lip and go, oh, you actually... You've got to look after your kids, isn't it? You know, that's yeah. Like, when did you know you wanted to do comedy, man? Oh, yeah, it's back to that. Um, yeah. When I was about... Realistically, and I, yeah. I don't think I'm making this up because I think you can go back and change your history, yeah. but I think when I was about eight... Right. Yeah, I wow. remember writing a script to my dad and reading it to him in the driveway, mm. and he didn't have it. Now that I'm a dad, I realise why he didn't have any time. Like he's busy doing other stuff, but... I read it to him. So I remember that was around the age. And when I was 17, I was I was so determined to do stand-up. And I was going to go to some workshop, but my car broke down. So I, I thought, oh, this is a sign. And then I waited, so I waited another two years. If you could go back, would you... Because I, I think of this for myself. If I could go back to school, I would I'd do all those things that my parents mm. and the grown-ups around me told me to do. Just mm. to study, keep my head down, mm. and just tick all of society's little boxes yeah. so that I can come out the other end yeah. with way more options absolutely uh, I would totally do that because I left school at 16 oh gosh and then went I went back work doing my job that I did in the weekends and I was like building stone walls of stone mason, you know yeah and I was like I did it for the summer I went like luckily it was just like the last couple of months or whatever and I was like I fucking hate this yeah I've, I'm going back yeah, yeah <laughs> so yeah. I went back and I had my head down man That's like a, oh, I went for it I went for it man so but it was a good lesson. I was like, oh man, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, I did exactly the same. I left at uh, 17. Mm. I, I finished school, mm. but I didn't put in. Like, I didn't mm. get the grades to go into university. Mm. And then I worked for a year and mm. I went back mm. and I thought, I went to night school after that. I'm, mm. I'm definitely not doing this for yeah. the rest of my life. Yeah. So you just, well, yeah, you that's work it. it. It instills that work ethic in you, didn't it? Huh? Yeah, that's absolutely. It. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's really important. Mm. For kids these days, and now we'll be telling my kids that when yeah. they reach that age, <laughs> it's like it's like uh, I, did, I had the same. I, I didn't have the grades to get into university straight away, yeah. so I was like, right, I'll do um, I'll do an access course. And I was like, and like everyone like did the access course, load them, drop down and stuff. But I was I was like just hammering away as soon as they gave me a sudden done. I was like another assignment done done, and I was like just I nailed all the stuff, you know. And I was in a secondary school doing this like uh, access thing. I was like I was standing. 
effort. And I was like, I've never gotten anything like this before in my life. And I was like, oh, another one? <laughs> oh, this is crazy. And uh, so I killed it with that. And then, uh, but, but I went to, when I came over here, I did uh, my degree in University of Wolverhampton. There's like hundreds of universities in the country. This is the 10th from the bottom, you know, so. And that was, uh, that was an experience though, because you know, from Ireland to here to Wolverhampton was a big culture shock for me. Yeah, I imagine. You know, that was it, but it was, um, yeah, it was good. Man. Your accent's not as strong as I, I just thought you were really enthusiastic, but it's just the, 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 now I can hear it underneath mm. that. There's mm. a twang of Irish. That's it. I had to really slow it down when I came over here because no one understood a word I said. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, they're like, oh, boy. In Wolverhampton, the accent, accents colliding, you know, that no one had a clue. So which part of Ireland were you? Uh, West Cork, uh, Skibbering. Oh, right. Yeah, I've been to Cork. Yeah, briefly. Mm. I was in Belfast, which is probably the wrong. That's what you guys. I've got cousins there. Though, yeah. Oh, yeah, great. I don't. I tell you what's amazing about Ireland for me, or mm. Northern Ireland, so the fact that there's so they still hang on to mm. the Protestant Catholic. Oh, it's 2017. I know. I cannot mm. believe it. I did the Empire recently, mm. and um, they yeah, the cab driver said, "Oh, this seems like a nice city." I've done it before, but I was just making a chat with the cab driver. Oh, Belfast seems like a nice city. He goes, yeah, it's all right when the sun's shining and there's no trouble. I was like, why would there be trouble? Yeah. What? I mean, mm-hmm. You can see that that was laced with, as long as no one's fighting. Mm. All the comics, there was, a, as I closed, there was three, two or three acts before me, mm. and they were all doing Protestant Catholic. Pro- I was like, whoa. Mm. Wow. Like, I didn't realize it's so culturally gra- you know, ingrained mm. in this yeah this place mm. did you do any anything like that oh, from religion yeah on stage the first time I did it I did and I was terrified I've got this bit I do about uh, how I was raised Catholic and they said don't touch yourself mm. and if you do bad things will happen and then the joke the punchline is and I didn't for a very long time and the day I decided to two planes fell into a building mm. and I remember thinking man you Catholics don't fuck around <laughs> but and I did that, and I was like, my, I thought, well, again, it goes yeah. back to what we were originally talking about. Just yeah. you would do this anyway. Mm. You shouldn't be able to do it here. Yeah, yeah, cool, and, totally. Yeah, and that was, that was fine. Yeah, oh, there was a, you know, yeah. heart, heart in mouth moment. Of course, yeah, just waiting. Yeah. Oh, please. <laughs> yeah, well, no, please. I don't care if they like it. But just I, like I walked away with my kneecaps. Yeah, that's stuff. true. You want to walk away from things, don't you? This is very true. <laughs> stand up. You know, you can do stand up. Not necessarily with knees, but you prefer to do it, you know, fully fully erect. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want, to stand, I want to be standing when I'm on stage, and I want to be standing when I'm off stage. Yeah, for sure. And you, that was the only time you've been in Ireland, to Cork as well? I went to Cork with my... I landed in Cork Airport with my mum. When I was here in 2005, she came over for a holiday, and we went and mm. we did a... Is it the Ring of Dingle? I keep getting the... Ring oh, of Kerry. Ring of Kerry. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where I get Dingle from. Yeah. Anyway, that Did you was kiss the blurry soul as well. No, oh. no. <laughs> no, I reckon that's got a lot of piss on it. It does, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. But we we can stay in these backpackers, and what I remember about it, hostels you call them, no TV and just a blanket and just like a really cold woman there, mm. just saying, "All right, she reds up there." And mm. you know, that'll be it. <laughs> you yeah. know, that sort of there's no warmth whatsoever. No. And I saw real poverty. Like mm. I saw like a kid in a puddle. The donkey behind it was just all those cla- not classic images, but mm. images you go, Whoa, this is this 20 at yeah. their stage was 2005. Yeah. So, you put these some of these people are doing it tough, mm, yeah, like the postcard kind of picture, yeah, yeah, that's it, oh, yeah, yeah. looking a wild look in the kid's eye with a donkey, kind of like this yeah. kid wants out of here, yeah, and that donkey's not going to be fast enough. Mm. And what's the sport you play over there? The um, hurling or hurling, yeah. Yeah. billboards everywhere for hurling, that yeah. looks like a tough sport, yeah. that's brutal. It. Yeah, kneecaps and shins, you want to watch out. Yeah, that's, that's all that you guys eat <laughs> grass. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one, all right. Do you play it? No, play I never it? played it. I never really right. played it. Yeah. I, couldn't, I, I, I was never any good at any stuff, any sports like that. I was terrible at all those kind of sports. Yeah, anything yeah. that involves getting hit in the shin on a yeah. cold day is not yeah. really for me. This is true. No, so. I, uh, yeah, Australian rules football was probably the closest. Mm. We don't really. Hockey, I guess, is the closest, mm. but yeah. Mm. As far as being a tough sport, Australian rules football was hard. Mm. But um, that was, yeah, that was involved cold mornings and joints being yeah. hit, mm. hit by other people's boots. Is your mum, like, still around? She's, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She's and in Australia. Yeah. Is, she's uh, coming over back, actually, oh, yeah. at the end of the year. And is, well, is your old man as well? Mm, yeah, they're split, but he, yeah, he's still not, he's still alive. And yeah. he was just here about two months ago. He came for a visit. Cool. Does he do anything, like, creative or anything like that? Or? He wanted to be a writer, but he, right. and he um, never sort of... To be a writer, you've got to write. Mm. And I don't think he ever really stuck at it. 
He's a he's a nurse now, or right. director of nursing. He runs nursing homes. Mm. Yeah, so uh, that's his background. Mm. But he did have a creative side. My mum, not so much. Yeah, he he was sort of. He's probably what I get. It's weird though. Most of my money income comes from writing now, as mm. opposed to yeah. But it's definitely a progression down the DNA line. Mm-hmm. Somewhere in the DNA, yeah. there was some writer, and I don't even know if I'm it, but I'm like maybe the, yeah. Two generations from now, that we got. Some amazing writer. Right? This is your legacy, son. Yeah. No pressure. But <laughs> Here's my scripts. Yeah. My dad wanted to do it. He couldn't quite nail it. I'm all right at it, but I'm not quite nailing it. Yeah. Your all that money's on you. And how did how did your dad take that? I mean, like, because you know, when you don't pursue the creative urge, did it take it internal, or did he like? Or when I pursued my no, creative when wish. when your dad did he like did he kind of like did he go was okay? I accept my accept my fate. Uh, oh, I don't know. I, I think he was all right. I mean, yeah. he grew up in that generation where you just had to get on with it. Mm-hmm. Like, he had me when he was 20, so there was right. no time to, should I be an artist or should I? I don't know. It's, yeah. a, it's a real luxury to do what <laughs> we do. I mean, Absolutely. There's no, I think there's no denying or no, uh, the fact that we live in a world where there's the more comics that, and artists mm-hmm. than there have ever been. Mm. It suggests that the standard of living is okay. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're not having to go down a coal mine mm. and knock it out for 12 hours and then come up and think about doing five. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's true. No one, yeah, we're in a pretty sweet yeah. time. Yeah. And so it mostly comes from writing, you say? You're, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm purely by chance. I scored a job writing for a, a guy called Adam Hills who hosts The Last Leg. So in 2012, I just got a phone call from a producer saying, we've got this show, this fellow... Hills, he wants you to write for him. Do you want him? And I went, and we just moved out. We were like down to our last thousand pounds or whatever, mm. like, which is not much when you got a kid. Of course. And we're like, okay, yeah, I think I could swing that. Mm. And I thought I'd get five within a day because I'm not really, I never really considered myself to be a comedy writer. There's a real, I've, and now that I've been in that scene, there's a definite difference between a mm. comic and a writer. They're two totally different caps. By chance of that show, not only did it last for five years, but I managed to last with it. Great. So, yeah. And just f- fully on that one show or you do other things too? No, I'm only right for myself. I don't really... I mean, I, I would never say no to any kind of work if mm. you want to put bread on the table. But mm. um, what I really want to do is stand up and mm. and write my own scripts and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So. so what you were in the, in the process at the moment writing uh, anything? I'm, well, I'm writing my show. Right. I'm still doing that, still working on that. I've got um, scripts I'm working on at home. Yeah, I've got the job at the, the last leg writing mm. job, which is... This year is quite full on. I think they're doing forty episodes this year, oh, so it's quite a, yeah commitment. It's a quite a commitment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so trying to find between that and kids, trying to find space. It's, yeah, I keep sure. toying with the idea of getting up at five a.m. You know, you know, do you, I don't yeah. know, do you make promises to yourself? I'm going to get up at five a.m. for the rest of my life. Mm. I worked it out. If mm. I did that, I think I, I I create an extra ten years in my life. You're going on current sleeping patterns. I love the way you procrastinated that much. You worked that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah. if I did that, you know, you know what? I just and then you're using all that energy to, to yeah. work it out. But it's like I I have toyed with that idea as well. And today was going to be the day that I was going to get really really early. But it always is. But you know what? <laughs> I, I thought to myself as well. I was like, because my car broke down, as I said. Yeah. I was like, oh, I need to get up early, and I need to ring the mechanic around the corner, you know, to fix my car. Sure. And I was like, I didn't list. It's like, why the fuck am I getting up? Yeah. I'm just going to pick the phone up. I'm going to ring him and go, hey man, did you have space, you know, to fix my car? Yes phone goes back down again yeah. I have to go back to sleep yeah. why the fuck am I getting up because I'm just up um, and I feel like that I'm, being awake makes me feel like I'm working <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah it's like because it, you you know it's, it's quality of being of, of, of this is such, so, such a bad sentence it's quality of being awake uh, but you're, <laughs> you, you know because you're sitting there like I'm my brain isn't firing on that level. Yeah, you know, you're, and, and you know yourself. You know, you get you get a pile of notes. You might write. I've got pile of notes for this show, whatever it is to, to work through. I've got all this other stuff over here. This pile of notes is about five days worth here. I'm going to do it all yeah. in the next five days. Yeah, and then you start. The first day's amazing. You're like, yeah, I'm on it, doing it. Second day, a bit slower. Third day, fucking slow as shit. You get one page done. You know, yeah. it's like it's just like, and you you're like you hit the wall of like, and you're in the end, you're just like you're just copying the notes into a book. You're not even you're, the brain isn't firing, enjoying that creative moment because you've done too much in the you know like you've done a whole day the sure. first day you know. Do you do you break it down into hours? I'm gonna have to start doing that. I'm gonna have to start doing that. Well, it's a great tip that I got from a, I think I read a book 
called the war on art. Mm. A, do you got to do the work, but B, mm. you've got to allow. Um, this may not be from that book, but you've got to treat it like a job in the sense mm. that because I used to get up and go and think about the comedy from the moment I got up mm. until the moment I went to bed, not not to a, in a productive way, mm. but just a well, you know, gigging. How come I? Mm. So I made those mm. phone calls. God, I'm such a fucking loser. Mm-hmm. You know, all that those. Rather than go, okay, you know what? At ten o'clock, yeah. I'm going to write, and I'm going to write till twelve. I'm going to have a half hour for lunch. I'm going to write from twelve thirty to two thirty, and then that's my four hour day. Because mm-hmm. personally, I don't think you can be creative for more than four hours a day. Yeah. And then you can do admin in and a, in a before that, after that, whatever. But mm-hmm. for those four hours, that's my time. And then when you get to spend time with your family, it's like proper family. You're engaging, mm-hmm. and that took me a long time to figure that out. Mm. And accidentally pick up material. Oh, that's a good bit as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You switched on to pick stuff up from the, your life, you know. Like, yeah, oh, and I'm relaxed. Oh, this is all. Oh, there's more stuff. Oh, shit, more notes. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Actually, I do, I do cast that net, but I, yeah. I try not to. Uh, I figure if it's really funny, I'll remember it in, in mm. half an hour's time. Mm-hmm. Or whenever yeah. I get a private moment to myself, I've got to go to the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> and a great bit about biscuits <laughs> yeah. that you just gave me that's a good idea so you do four hours I try truck. no no I don't see this is the problem my yeah. discipline's shit so for example today I've got because I get Mondays and Tuesdays to my, in my time mm. and I had you in for 12.30 so I went okay I'll do a bit of admin in the morning mm. and then when I get home from this which what time is it now five past one five past one so I said I'll get home at the earliest We'll be around, it takes an hour to get home, so 3 o'clock, so yeah. 2.30, 3 o'clock. And then I'll, I'll go from there. So I've already compromised on my time, mm. which is fine, because I'm, I'm figuring this is part of my job. Mm. But uh, I've put four hours further down the day. Mm. So now I have to wait for my kids to go to bed. Yeah. But then Nikki's going to want to hang out. So yeah. I, uh, I <laughs> now I'm going to do eight hours tomorrow. <laughs> oh, no. And then I'll wake up and go, who the fuck am I really thinking? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the other thing is doing it when you don't want to do it. That's the hard bit. Yeah, it is. Yeah, just kind of trying to get in that fun zone for you know for for the times you're like, oh man, I just need to just want to I've just go to bed early. I love sleep so much. Absolutely, I think that's one thing most comics have in common is mm. we mm. may not all agree, but we definitely love yeah. sleep. What's the name of your show? You're right. Oh yeah, you? good point. Well done. <laughs> uh, well, I'm doing it in Brighton. Mm. And then I'm doing, it's the same show, but in Brighton, the, the title is, is it the Quadrant at 6pm? Oh, yeah. The show is called Adam Vincent, The Scared and Lonely Tour. Yeah. But it's not, it's just sort of, it's just a title because the, in Edinburgh, this is the main show, it's called How Not to Kill Yourself When Living in the Suburbs. Hmm. And it's about, um, well, it's about living in the suburbs now. Desperate it can be mm. for any, you, this is, I would call this the suburbs. Mm-hmm. Do you struggle with, with the monotony or the... Mm. Not the lack of communication with other people. The uh... um, well, I, I kind of I do I do a little. I am quite a solitary being anyway, right. and I have brought, been brought up in the country. Oh, so, okay. like I have brought up um, this is this is like populated for me. You know, yeah. the nearest neighbour for me in the country was like a mile away. Oh, brilliant! So yes and no. I, I do get a little bit kind of like uh, paranoid. When I see people at their windows, and, I, uh, and occasionally I've I've been in like the cabin, and I've looked up, and I've seen them looking down. I'm like, don't, don't, this is why I don't look at you. <laughs> I just don't want them to look down. At me. Yeah. I'm looking at them, so don't you dare look down at me. And they look down at me, and then we have an awkward moment. It's like, who started this? <laughs> you know, that's it. You know, oh yeah, like, I can see. There's one there. Seat. There's one there as well. And the right. neighbor, the neighbor looked down at me one night, and I was like looking back up, and I was like. And it wasn't through. I think it was, it was frosted. It was frosted gla- glass. I don't know why. I was like, "Why are they, are they up at this time?" It's like three in the morning. I said, like, "Why are they up?" And yeah. I was like, "I bet they're looking down." And they go, like, "Why are they up?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I know, but I reckon yeah. what they must. Do, I'd love to know what what you should do is go around there and interview them and find out what they think or thought you were yeah. doing in this cave, mm. because for me, people get so bored living in the burbs that they can, they want that. But they want an adventure. They want mm. a story. So mm. to see some guy in a cabin, probably pacing, I imagine at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. They're thinking, what the hell is he doing? Is he is he some kind of psycho? What's Murdering. he building something? What's he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they're probably you're probably doing them a favour, yeah. really. But it makes it awkward when I see him in the in the drive the next day. Hey, how you doing? Or, or like crowbar hello out of them. Yeah. And I go, all right, how's it going? Yes. How you doing? Yeah. He will. <laughs> Three questions before they even acknowledge you. Oh, it's, really? Yeah, yeah, it was a bit awkward, but it's fine now. It's fine. They're, they're nice. They really are nice. But I think that maybe that was just my. I was like, oh, 
you know, like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm just trying to control my environment too much. <laughs> Do you say there's no conflict between you? No, we're all, we're all good, actually. All the neighbours here are pretty that's cool. That's good. That's pretty that's good. lucky. Yeah. You're aggressing your show, man. You're about the hell what it's like. Adam, oh, yeah, Adam that's Vincent fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, to, how not to kill yourself when living in the suburbs. Yeah. Uh, well, that's just the title. And, uh, yeah, because it was called The Scared and Lonely Tour. And, mm. and, and then my friend said, look, you probably need a title that's going to get people in. Because mm. he said, in Edinburgh, it doesn't really matter what the title is. But so you might as well. That that being said, make the most of it. Just trying mm. to get people in. So I thought about it, and I said, oh, "What about how not to kill yourself when you're in suburbs?" And he laughed and said, "Yeah, that's probably going to get more people in." Mm. He's some guy who's done it a lot of times, and he reckons he knows. He probably does know what he's talking about. Mm. So I thought, well, I'll take his advice. It could be the worst title ever. I don't know, but it's about living in the burbs, and it's about my. Well, it's just me really, just mm. doing my stand up mm. and uh, life through the eyes of an Australian living in yeah. Bedford. Mm. who uh, doesn't necessarily want to live there but has no choice. So who said that you should name give it a title? That oh, right, that was yeah. Tom Crane, who's right. a very funny uh, writer and stand-up in mm. his own right. Um, he said you've got to make the most of the title, mm. and he's correct. It's true. They, they need to have the illusion that they're going to learn something out of this. Yeah, Matt, yeah. yeah. I, I've always been bad at that. Yeah. You get these people who do these theme shows, and they're great for them, and it works for them, but I've... I've I've never really been able to pull that off. Mm. Not really. That's not really the way my mind mm. works. Mm. The idea of doing a show that's where the all you know the beginning twenty minutes comes back in the last twenty, mm. you know, it's all entwined. That's they're great. It's just not. Mm. Maybe I'm not smart enough to do that kind mm. of comedy. They sell tickets, though, don't they? Yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah, that's, everyone's got their own strengths, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, yeah, yeah. They've, they've got their own strength, and that's a smart. Like Tom's right, it's a smart way to sell a show. Mm-hmm. Damn right. That's it, you're going to need a hook. You don't need, the whole show doesn't have to be a hook. You just have to get people in. Yeah, that's it. And I'm always like, there's an arrogant part of my head. You're going, oh, well, my stand-up's going to be good enough. And they're just going to come in on the, the strength of my, you know, zingers. Yeah. But it's just not, <laughs> not it's in Edinburgh, it's a shit fight just to uh, find lunch. Let alone yeah. get people in through the door to see you. So, have you done Edinburgh before? Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, right. like, I did it in 2013 and 14. Right. And uh, then I, I think I took two years off uh, and then I got married. Oh, yes. I couldn't afford to go. Yeah. So, so this year, for me, the you know the, the joys in the writing it really and then the getting better. And I'm like, okay. Absolutely. So, Do so it. That's yeah. it. So I'm, 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 and I am even write and say, I'm like, oh man, I've written so many jokes I thought I would have written before. You know, now even stuff in my life, I'm like, oh, that's, that's a really fucking good joke there. That'd be great for my stand up. You know, it's all, it's all helping. It's those little things, you know, you, you know yourself, you have like, you're consistently writing. I mean, I went full time in April last year mm-hmm. and then I was like, okay, now I need, I need the sitcom, I need the radio sitcom, I need the, you oh, know, gosh. all these little things. So I'm going to do these things and they're on the list yeah. and I'll get them done. It's like, you know, the podcast, there's a saying, you know, the, the terror of like, yeah. I'm writing the first thing. It's like the terror was around the first hour. It's going to be fucking terrible. It's going to be terrible. And I'm, as I'm writing, I'm like, no, there's some really nice bits in here. It's a very personal show, really, more than... More than like the theme that you know everyone can really more relate. I think everyone can relate to it, sure. and there are common truths in it. Yeah, but it's not like a, uh, a like a, a massive hook of like of social kind of um, examination of our times or anything like that. You know, it's just like this is how I think. Yeah, this and what's is, the show called? It's called Tolerance. Oh, oh, there you go, yeah. Tolerance. Yeah. Yeah. But do you find it? And this is what when I moved over, or well, so when we moved over from Australia, we had no mm. idea what we were landing on, or mm. landing in. But the, just to take that step, and you mm. took a similar step by quitting your job. Mm. It's never as bad as you think it's going to be. No, no. And that's I wish I could tell everyone in the world that mm. just take that jump. Mm. It's not as bad. Mm. It, I mean, don't get me wrong; it's terrifying occasionally. Oh is, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh man, like you know, it, there was a, there's a lot so of pressure on the M1. <laughs> this is true. This is very true. But it's like, it's like that. It's the first step. You're right. I mean, it's like a, a you know, Lao Tzu, isn't it? Yeah. You know, the journey of a thousand miles starts with the, beneath your feet. You know, one yeah. one, one step. step at a time. Exactly. Like starting a podcast. Like doing any starting a, vi- a viral video. There's gonna be some ropey shit you're gonna put out there, and yeah. that's okay. Yeah, you're learning, and you can always stop doing it if you want to. Exactly. There's, there's no. You can go back on it. Mm. Yeah, it's that. But if, don't you think that the bad times when you jump in the abyss and the scary moments are exactly what you want to be going through? Like they're the kind of moments where you look back and go, oh, "I remember when that when that was shit," and you kind of look you you look back at it as a nice thing mm. because you got to go through that trial mm. and you came out the other side. Mm. Whereas if you just 
do the same thing or the same job that you don't really like and you maintain that. I mean, that's, mm. and, but if it's not good, it's not bad, it's just mm. uh, possibly unsatisfying. Mm. That's it. You're, de- you're dead already. Yeah. I, I said that job I was in, I was, I was waiting to die. Yeah. I was like, I was like, I was like why, am I, why am I here? I'm like, oh, great, I've got great, great medical. Amazing, I've got great medical. And I was like, I, I started to go, I wasn't a hypochondriac, but I started to go to the doctor just hoping that they'd find something. Yeah. I'm so not, I could oh, go, man. so I could, so I could, like, bow out. Like, you yeah, like a guy's in a bad relationship, secretly hoping his girlfriend dies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you just bow out, like, yeah. you know, honorably. Go, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, I it's cannot not continue. Fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> you, know, you know, so I don't have to commit Harry Carry, you know? Oh. I was like, oh. If anyone is listening, can I please say, <laughs> you're experiencing those feelings, yeah. leave. Yeah, exactly. Quit. Just go. Just quit now. Quit oh, now. Don't man. do it. Like, it's you know, not worth it. No, it's definitely You may as well be a, ho- a homeless person talking to themselves. we got a woman in Bedford who's she's this black nun who walks around mm. reciting the Bible. Yeah. And a lot of people think she's crazy. I think she's doing it for her. You know, she's mm. not living that mundane. <laughs> Mundane life. <laughs> I think people who judge her are the people who are crazy. People walking to work doing the same job they had. Getting the train at the end of the day and just seeing people trudge up the stairs to get you know their cars to go home while their ulcers slowly fast for a while. Oh, that's it. They're dead already. They're dead. Al- they're, literally, they've, they've given up. Their body is the only thing that's moving now. Their mind is dead and their body is, yeah. it just keeps moving and keeps eating. And, and oh, oh, God. I mean, it's, the, what, the sad thing is, is they're not dead. The sad thing is that they are actually, on a Saturday or a Sunday, they get glimmers of life. Yeah. That they, and they come alive and they have these birthdays and, you know, but, uh, yeah. you know, they've got to do it. I can't, yeah. I can't okay. make them do it. Like if they did follow their dreams, maybe there'd be more, there'd be, maybe there'd be even less um, work out there. So oh, yeah. like, oh great, they're following their dreams, great, and there's no fucking work. Okay, well, shit. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, what about, but the robots are coming, their jobs are done anyway, so yeah. the robots are coming. True. I can't wait for the robots to come. Mm. I can't wait for them to take the tube, take the trains. Mm. I want robots to automate that shit. Yeah. I don't care about the people who were train drivers and losing a job, fuck them. Yeah. They should have dreamed bigger. It's not a hard job anyway, is it really? <laughs> Just forward, What's stop. That? Forward, stop. Oh, I said, yeah, I imagine it's quite... But you know that if they hit a certain number of people, like, you know, when people jump in front of the train? Oh, yeah. You, you hit a quota, you, you're off... Oh, the really? Rest, the rest of your life on some... I've heard this could be a myth, but you're on some serious pain for the rest of your life. I think it's like five or six dead people hitting the, hitting the train. And you get like... You're off, yeah. You so get, there's some guy out there waiting just for one more. Yeah. He doesn't want it, but he does. So yeah, he wants to just like have a bit of a... Yeah, what's an early retirement, yeah? Mm. Five, six people jump off on the train, you're you're okay, you're off on disability. Yeah, yeah, I think... I don't yeah. know what the number is, but um, the tube... I think it's... The, I'm sure it's the same for the train, but it's the tube as well. Yeah. But, yeah. Do you think that'll go up as, like, people... The human population of the world increases? Like, people jumping be, in front of trains. It'd be more likely for that to happen then, wouldn't it? I reckon it'll happen, yeah, with, with high numbers, statistically, yeah. you'd think so. But also, if I want this to go back on what we were just saying, I think if you don't have a job, it's a real skill to do nothing and not go nuts. Uh-huh. Yeah. You, the mental illness is going to go through the roof Things. when people don't have something, some kind of validation mm. at the end of the day, some sense of, I achieved mm. this, be a, a shitty pay packet or a, they yeah. built something. Take away those uh, milestones. Mm then people are going to stew in their own thoughts. Mm. So that could be the next evolutionary step mm. is us talking, you going back to you being Zen, having the mind to be strong enough or empty enough mm. to cope with not having to do anything. Mm. Do you meditate as well? I go through phases of meditation. Right. Yeah. I've just started doing yoga. I've got a sore back, so I've had to do yoga. But, you know, I've tried to meditate much like I try and get up at 5 a.m. in the morning, mm. which I don't, but, yeah, 10 minutes a night, I try and do. That's good. Do you do? A little bit. I'm not as, as consistent as that, but uh, my wife does meditation sort of things as well, and I turn up there occasionally, try not to fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I quite cool. like it. I like it when you get, because sometimes you get a good, I get on a good mm-hmm. run, like mm-hmm. where I'm like, and as soon as you go, oh, fuck, I'm in this, I'm in this, that's when you're out of it. But yeah. sometimes the bliss is amazing. Yeah. It's like it's taking a sweet pill, mm. you know, you feel I, I don't have to sleep as much. I'm not as tired. It's, I mean, the rewards are there, but doing it every time, mm. you know, all it takes is one thing to go wrong. You know, mm. you get home from work late, so now I can be fucked. Oh, they should do it at schools. I'm, I'm yeah, one hundred percent. Kids should be meditating, particularly uh, 
not that I want to break up the sexes, but I think teenage boys could yeah. definitely do sure. some, some calming down. Mm. Focus. Fo- yeah, absolutely. Having a, well, I guess girls are the same, but they've got, I don't really, I'm not a girl, so I don't know what they have to go through, but I know that the boys definitely mm. have to, uh, they need a strong, what do you yeah. call it? Mentor. Mentor. That's yeah, the yeah, word yeah, I was looking sure. for. Mentor. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. Um, to guide them in the right direction. They're so distracted by, by everything. Isn't it full of this energy to, you know, that can be needs to be harnessed and focused into doing what they would enjoy, rather than just because it can get pulled in in so many different directions. Yeah, you know, well, especially with social media. I mean, mm. how going through teenage years was tough mm. when you, I imagine you and I did definitely when I did. I'm sure mm. it was the same for you. Every teenager is going to say it was tough. Mm-hmm. Well, I was going to say looking back it was tough. But going through knowing that there's another level of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Mm. Yeah the peer pressure in that and people faking stuff like that, taking photos of their dick and sending it off yeah. to go, I mean, what the hell, what is that? Mm. People photographing their cock mm-hmm. and it's not like it's okay. I don't get that. So that whole world, that murky world of yeah. trying to impress people, not only in person but online. So you can't even escape in your own bedroom. It's a new form of social sabotage, really. They're sabotaging themselves, aren't they? And they're twisting social interaction into something that's abstract and just... Nasty. Yeah, I, I wish I could articulate it. In a, mm. I wish I had the words to describe how brutally painful it must be for kids mm. going through that. Like, does you've got a seventeen year old living mm. here? Does, mm-hmm. Do they have the the phones and everything? Uh, they've got phones and like and hooked up to their like plays games online and everything like this. And but but they're so hooked into it. Yeah, that the social side is serious. Like I think is very very much lacking. You know, yeah, and, like, and I'm kind of yeah. Sc- it's kind of scary. Yeah, it's, it's like you know, you like you ask kids questions sometimes of that age and go, and they're like, you know, they have to really take a minute because it's actual thought, thought process. Yeah, yeah. Thought one, that's, they have to like, do the thinking rather yeah. than Google. Yeah, that's it. A, qu- a question. Oh, hey, yeah. uh, they actually go into that kind of like firmware updating mode. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like Bugs Bunny when it gets hit on the back of the head with a plank. You know, he's like, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, and got the birds <laughs> flying around the top. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can't stand, my mm. pet peeve are kids, like any kid with at, when you're out at a restaurant and mm. I've got a screen. Mm. Screens outside of the mm. house. Yeah. Or, you know, I think kids should have a screen, maybe to a table or something, just to get them out of that, those interactions. Yeah. Or it's the parents, it's lazy parents just mm. going, well, I don't want to, I don't want to, what happens if he cries? Well, f- tell them to stop fucking whinging. The, the the laziness of parents drives me. N- There's mm. one the society's in big trouble. Mm. If you can't tell your kid to not do something and they can't have the decency to listen and respect mm. their parents, well, there's a big problem there. I think. Mm. Said the man who's probably a really harsh dent in the eyes of, <laughs> <laughs> in the eyes of the world. Damn it! No. Well, yeah, I, and and the other thing is diet, food. Yeah. Kid, I'm sorry, I've, I've sort of steered this my way, but parents who give their kids cans of soft mm-hmm. drink and shit and forgive me if this happens but I'm talking like six year olds and seven yeah. year olds walking around with Pepsi and what the, you're shredding their kidneys mm. it's horrible mm. yeah, it's, and it's not seen as abuse it's just mm. normal so they've got screens they're eating way too much sugar I read a stat like I think the average six year old has had more sugar than an adult human would have had like an 80 year old man or 60 year old man would have had when they were like 100 years ago wow you know, by the age of six, I've had more sugar. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. it's insane. So sugar, screens, the, the, who would want to go through that? Mm. Okay, totally. Where are we going with that? I don't know. Where, how's humanity going to evolve? Oh, man, not good. Diabetes is going to be the killer. Yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I used to, that's the other thing. That I used to be a nurse. What I wish is the other thing I think they should do is have tours of hospitals where school kids can go in and have see someone's necrotic ass being the... the the, the bandage being changed on it so that they can go oh yeah this is why I should probably eat better because that, at worst they're seeing someone with a missing leg which is mm. nicely neat mm. that's not what I mean that's necrotic ass is that what happens is yeah it? Oh, man god yeah. I didn't even know this yeah. man you so you've got me. you've got some obese person sitting down yeah they get pressure sores yeah because the blood can't flow because of the diabetes and so they get these sores and the sores can't heal because they've got diabetes yeah to the point where it just gets worse and worse, where it gets into the bone, it gets infected. To the point where you can put your fist 
into their leg or wherever the sore is. Oh, yeah. And it stinks. It's disca- you know, and these poor people are in so much pain. Mm. And their relatives are like, I've got to go in and visit, but it's just horrific. Yeah, of course. No one is seeing that. That stays in the hospital or in the nursing home or wherever yeah. these people end up or in the home mm-hmm. where they've got community care. Whoa. And it's not on the TV. I mean, we talk about the cigarette packets with the pictures on them with the weird eyes and the yeah. tongue and the... Get the diabetes happening on the coke on the coke wow. can. I'm, yeah. It's insane that the government let us eat so much sugar. And it's like, is that just because they're, just because they're massively and morbidly obese? Is that right? Well, not massively and morbidly. I mean, just some of them are just obese. Some of them are arms as big as you might imagine when they're yeah. still getting chronic you know um, ulcers on there yeah. when you become a diabetic you have to always wear shoes that protect your feet because if you get a cut yeah. you, your body can't heal it and right. it's going to get worse and worse and worse so you, that's your feet but if you're sitting on your butt yeah. and the blood's not flowing you get a sore Heavy. it's not very nice I mean I, I find it hilarious but <laughs> <laughs> I do that's my that's, but that's my sort of <laughs> yeah. my, my, that's my yeah. sense of humour but it's, a lot of people are like can't deal with it. It's the same reason I think mm-hmm. everyone should see, should visit someone who's had a stroke. Yeah. Because you kind of go, well, I could sit around and wonder what I want to do with my life, or, mm-hmm. or I could, or I could actually do it. Mm-hmm. And the difference is, see a guy who can't do anything, and then go, oh, yeah, maybe I should make the most of what I go. So why did you leave nursing then? What happened? Well, I, technically, I'm still registered oh, until right. August, but I haven't nursed for really six or seven months. Yeah. Because um, the writing's just yeah paved my way a little bit so I haven't had to and nursing's a profession I think it's something you can't really you can't dabble in nursing no. these guys are working so hard and they're so professional mm. so to suddenly you go you know what I might just do this part yeah. time and it's just not fair things move on as well I guess and change oh the yeah yeah the technology changes and mm. um and I was only ever really doing aged care in nursing homes so mm. it wasn't that stressful but because they're so under resourced now Mm. You would go in as an old, I was an agency nurse, so I'd go in and there'd be one other nurse. I remember the last shift I did, she, the poor girl was from Spain. She was, must have been early 20s as a nurse and she was in charge, so she was technically my boss. And she had, I think there was 40 or 50 aged care residents all needing attention and we split it up into two, but I didn't know any of them. And mm. so she kind of had to help me. And the, These people, some of the residents were supposed to have like, they'd have drip feeds where they feed you through the stomach mm. and... Um, a lot of the clips that were supposed to be on these pumps weren't yeah. on the pumps, and so right. this poor girl, they're yeah, literally, literally having putting tape around stuff that should have a clip on it, and yeah, it's, it, it was just Duct tape sort of thing, yeah, like an engine kind of, like, yeah, yeah, for a bit. gaffer oh, tape, that's essentially. terrible. Yeah, so yeah. you're so you're in that situation, going, I not only do I not know anybody, mm. uh, I'm not familiar with the residents. I've got a poor girl whose English as a second language is being, is my boss. She's having trouble understanding me. I'm having trouble understanding her. Yeah. I just thought this isn't in any way safe. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to do this anymore because mm. I probably am. Someone's going to die. Yeah. You know. So wow. why would I put myself and my family at risk mm. and the person who might <laughs> might yeah, die more than point? That's it. You don't get yeah. sued for that kind of stuff, is it? That's it. Yeah. That's why I prefer aged care because mm. if I do make a mistake, mm. you know, they haven't lost too much. Yeah. Know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, they're on the way out. They're hey, on the way out. Them. Exactly. Why get them? Yeah. <laughs> if I was to do paediatrics, I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's no, it. No way. Stakes are high, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So they're yeah. The, I mean, mm-hmm. nurses who work with children, I could never do that. Mm. Every nurse has something they couldn't do. Yeah. I could not work with that's children. That's fair. That's fair. And uh, so your show is in the quadrant at six o'clock. In yeah, Brighton. In Edinburgh, Edinburgh, it's at Espionage. Yeah. At 4.15. I don't know the name of the room, but right. it's somewhere at the ground floor in the Espionage. Yeah. And last few years then, Adam... Yeah. What is the biggest low you've experienced and the biggest high? So low. Okay, lows and highs. Biggest low, I don't really know if there's a one thing that stands out. I remember th- there's been times when I just haven't been gigging enough mm. and then wanting to gig. And the thing is, with this scene here, it's so fractured that, mm. I and mean, I think you should get a performance anywhere. One of the, so many comics that it's hard to get to know promoters and say, hey, this mm. is what I do. So when you finally, I don't like doing tryout tens. I don't I really don't because you're basically offering your services for free mm-hmm. and if it goes badly they'll just, they'll just put a line through yeah. and, I, and I, I think I had a tryout 10 at the Backyard Comedy Club and I just mm. didn't get it and it's like oh mm. man and then I just thought I've come here mm. on my own back for free and, and, mm. I, and I screwed it up there's no one to blame but me mm. yeah that was a low because of, 
I wanted to get in mm. and do more and more of these sort of, especially London gigs, because mm. they're so close. But so that was a low. That was it. Wasn't about that gig. It was just that time when I wasn't gigging mm. as much as I would have liked. And so there's no, so there's no juicy story about. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, hooker shot me in the leg with a gun, and uh, you know. uh, that, I, mean, that's, I've, I met her. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I, had, I wish I had those great stories. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's a great there's a comic in uh, in Australia, Greg Fleet, who. Is a, he used to be a junkie. Yeah, he's, right. All his stories are just like, how the fuck does that happen? Well, of course you're a stand-up. Yeah. You know, or you got caught in a time jail. I mean, who can't write stand-up about that? Yeah. But I'm just Mr. Humdrum, boring. I, to borrow someone else's jokes, my voice sounds like 70s architecture. <laughs> so to have an exciting story, I don't have that bad story. Other than I wasn't kicking it up for that moment. Mm. Like, highs, I went to Rio to, oh, yeah. for, to work in the last, yes. the last leg as a writer. Mm. So that, that was professional highs. Like, oh, cool, I get cool. to go and travel and drink um, alcohol on a beach mm. in Rio, uh, Copacabana. That was pretty sweet. I did Belfast the other day, which is the empire which is what I was talking mm. about. And I closed it, but I... And that was one of the. I closed it my way. And I was quite happy. Like I mm. just, I got, to, I did, because that can be a rough gig. And mm. so to to do my stand up the way I wanted to do it at that particular gig, yeah, was also like I walked off going, yep, yeah, cool, okay. It wasn't really a high. It was like a, well, you should be doing this. Yeah. This is what you should be doing, mm-hmm. and you did it. So I've talked way too much. No, that's great. Because that's all I'm here for. No, it? that's what you're here for. It's about you, man. Yeah. It's about you. You know what's it. Yeah, I feel sometimes I talk too much. <coughs> no, 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 no. Like I kind of, I kind of, like, oh yeah. And then I follow something. Oh no, I'm going to shut up now. But like, it's, it's about you guys. You know, it's about whoever's on the show. Yeah, yeah. no. There's always that filter of going. Just don't make, don't make yourself sound like an absolute. No, thing. definitely haven't. Uh, no, how that? many people listen to this? Uh, yeah. I've no idea. You don't even. I don't even know. I don't. Do you know, I don't. I don't. I don't care. It's like, I, I really don't care. That's amazing. Do you know what? It's like, I, I, I enjoy it. That goes back to the doing the work and whatever happens. Yeah, happens. whatever. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I fucking could die tomorrow. Like, fucking, I'm, I'm talking to people that have some great times on here. People are more worried about how they're going to be, they're, obviously they're worried about how they're going to be perceived. Mm. So they, they come in with their guard up. Yeah. And there's a, there's a comics, I've never listened, I mean, and I'll get, I'm telling you now, I'm not going to listen to this. I'll probably, I'm, probably, that's I'm glad I did it. But um. Is it the comics comic? Who's the guy that does that? Oh, the comedians comedian. Comedians comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've heard so many comics bitch out other comics. Mm. Have, you, have you heard this episode? Have you mm. heard that episode? Mm. Like, oh, that's. Yeah. Why would you put yourself? Through? As in, like, as in, like, how they sound? Yeah, okay. Oh, they, really? they, they they reel off how many uh, all the bad comics. Oh, really? Not the, not the bad comics, but the comics that became self indulgent. Bra- I don't know, possibly bragging or just making no, I know what you mean. foolish. Yeah, yeah, swaggering around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I've done this, I've done this. And I've done comics this. love analysing other comics. Mm. And I, it's something I can't do because it, I, if I'm doing it to other people, I'm do- doubly doing it to myself. Mm. And I desperately don't want to do that. See, that's one thing I've noticed by doing this is how inarticulate I am. Mm. I walk in here knowing that I'm not, not Shakespeare. You know, I'm, my words aren't going to flow, you know, to, I can't even articulate how inarticulate. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's the paranoia. It's like, oh my God, I'm brilliant. But you have the words, they're all there. Yeah, but sometimes yeah. you get paranoid about using that extra big word. Like, oh, what? then you go, oh, I'm going to use this big word. And then people are going to judge me for using that big word because I'm trying to be something that I might not think that I am yet. No, the only time I'm using a big word, the only time I'm worried about using a big word is when I don't quite know the meaning of it, yeah. which is about every third I just word. go with it. I just go with it. I, I can't wait. And they'll give people something to talk about. Like, fuck it, you totally t- t- use that in the wrong place. You know, and, and doing this stuff, right? It's yeah. like, like, I fucking painted a green screen on, on the wall there, right? Oh, good for you. I've got to fucking use that now. Yeah. I've ruined the wall otherwise. Otherwise, you know? brilliant. It's like that kind of commitment. Commit yes. to that word. Yeah. I've released a couple of videos that are terrible, right? But I know they're terrible. Yeah. But they will be better. Yeah, but this yeah, is a start, yeah. you know? Cool. You've got to start somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Very good point. I want to do a podcast. Here's my idea for a podcast. Mm. I've got two ideas. It's called Adam Vincent talking I've dropped the, the Scott I don't, I don't use oh right sorry it's the playing for so I think it's why it's on Facebook anyway so Adam Vincent talking and my I want to do six episodes where mm. I just get people talking about how to make the best omelette who knows how to do you can find six right. gun people I want six different ways to make an omelette yeah. so it's called talking omelette and then I want to call talking the next one is six a series of six would be talking losers talking to losers yeah. and I'll pick people who have lost big like yeah. just lost yeah and because uh, I think we focus too much on success yeah, oh, yeah totally we need to focus Absolutely. on how to lose to be big mm-hmm. I want to meet those guys so, but that's these again these are ideas that I have and I said to Nikki I want to do this thing maybe 
should do a podcast. Mm. Just make it on. Why not? Fuck it. I can yeah. do that. And she goes, that's a great idea. Mm. And then uh, a week later, I'm like, I haven't done that. Oh, shit. Just, yeah, like, but the thing is, who are you going to get on? Well. That's going to be like a difficult one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'd like to uh, talk to you. Why, why do you want to talk to me? Oh, why is that? Because you're the biggest loser I've ever met. Yeah. And they've got to be aware of that. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to be a loo- you'd have to be cool with your loot. But I think I'd try. Oh fucking hell! Oh, I don't worry What's about this guy doing. Suburban noises, man. Hey, this is the first time for a while it's happened. Don't worry about it. Losers, I've, I've got one loser in mind. But talking about like people who have lost a million, mm. but then you know maybe they've made it again. But that, the, I want to talk about when they lost their million, when they lost everything. Mm. I reckon that'd be interesting. Yeah. Or the other idea is just do a podcast with me, just talking. And uh, until people fall asleep, which apparently exists, there's a guy out there doing oh. a podcast. He goes, "I've got a really boring voice, and uh, if you're about to go to sleep, then you just put me on and listen. And, uh, <laughs> you should be asleep within ten minutes." And he That's just talk, and apparently he just talks for like an hour, but That's his great. voice is so boring. That's great. I did a uh, driver awareness course, oh, yeah. and the uh, people there were you mean talking about people who don't necessarily like their jobs. Jesus Christ, these people are like. Basically, it's about not speeding when you drive, mm. and they're just going over the stats and why and what, and you're showing a slide with mm. a road on it. We're just boring. So, what are we looking for here? So, I don't know. We, no one wants to be there. Mm. No one cares. Yeah. They should because it's quite. Some of it's actually quite interesting, mm. but these people are just, just. It, it would be like doing the same ten minute routine mm. over, or twenty minute routine over and over mm. and over again. It would just, yeah, drive you nuts. Yeah. But, and how how many points did you get? In your, were you get kids get rid of the points? Yeah, it was too how fast. Were I, you going? I was doing. <laughs> I was doing sixty eight uh, in a sixty zone. Oh. but it was meant to be seventy, but they changed it. Oh. Yeah, although I'm worried about coming down here because I my I realize my GPS. I often go by my GPS mm-hmm. speed, which and I thought it was. I was doing sixty four. Turns out I was doing eighty. All right. <laughs> no. You should be okay. It's, there's not many cameras from here to that direction, is there? Really? Uh, I don't know. I uh, think I have been done once, but who knows? I don't know when they're on. When they're off, who mm-hmm. knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I quite like. I, but after that course, I'm like, I don't. I try very hard not to speed because yeah. you do actually learn. If you go five miles an hour over, you, mm-hmm. the difference is someone breaking their legs and someone Ugh. smashing their head on you, yeah. and never walking free again because yeah. you're in jail. You know, mm. and the other thing I learned, this is uh, fascinating, is if you speak to me on my, if you're my boss and you mm. ring me up and I answer on my car, but I, through the speakerphone mm. and I have a crash, you are culpable for manslaughter. It's, and another fact, well, the stat that they told mm. me is speaking on the phone, you're a wor- on the speakerphone in the car, you're a worse, it's worse than drink driving. Yeah. Like, I, I guess that you, if you really yeah. drunk it's, it's better than that but say you've had two beers or whatever you are a worse driver after having a conversation with no beer than you are drinking yeah. two beers yeah that's they, they, they've done tests and this wow. is, so it's you should never speak through a speakerphone which I used to do all the time yeah yeah me too I figured it, I'm not hurting anyone I'm not holding my phone yeah yeah but I am I guess I am distracted I still do it yeah yeah wow. and I, we probably will if we were truthful to ourselves but yeah but apparently all the time we're, we're, um, if they find out then you are liable whoa okay yeah. what about the hands free then same thing yeah, that's what I mean yeah, yeah. Hands, oh, so yeah. you're not holding the phone it's just yeah, coming yeah. through oh, man. yeah on bluetooth yeah, 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 yeah that's what I'm talking about yeah yeah that's you crazy. are worse dri- at driving than you oh, are man. inebriated uh, frightening it is like the texting I'm, yeah texting is definitely <laughs> oh man oh god have you seen that what's that great movie 8 Dr. pounds Str- oh, I think it's Dr. Strange I think you're going to say um, mm. But eight pounds, yes, I think I have. With Will Smith, where yes. You, oh God, I know. That's the fear, isn't it? Killing, obviously killing people. Mm. We don't want to kill anybody. Mm. Definitely. Oh man, I could not do that. Yeah. Of course you couldn't. That's such a redundant thing to say. Oh, I'd hate to do that. Yeah. Fucking who would? No, I'd love to do it, Adam. Jesus well, uh, Christ. Oh, that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think so. That's it. So we're going to see you at the Quadrant in Brighton. Quadrant in Brighton. I don't even have the. I think it's the. It's Monday and Tuesday, first two Monday and Tuesdays of the festival on the fringe, and then all month in Edinburgh, I will be there. Four fifteen espionage, one of the floors there. You'll yeah. see my ugly mug on a poster. Great, isn't that the worst thing? Sorry, I'm doing my posters right now. Do you get uh, the vanity I have when I'm trying to do the artwork on my poster? Mm. Do I really want to show my face? Yeah, like how many? Yeah, two hundred times. Mm. God. 
I can't stand it. It's like if I could just if I could do a show without my face on a post, yeah. I'd be happy. Yeah, I can't wait to get. I can't wait. If I ever got that successful, I'd be very happy. Just what you need. That's it. I just want my. You know what? I just want to hear. If I could, the best way. This is how arrogant, uh, secretly arrogant I am. Is that if I could just, just say, yeah, he'll be under a tree, and you'll see him, and then he's gonna do a stand up under a tree, and that's all. That's all the promo I need. Or yeah, yeah apparently Adam's performing like one tweet, which is something you know. That's what the mm. big guys can do. Do a gig here, and then people will flop. That's it. That's what you'd like. I'd love that. Yeah. Because even though I like being on, st- I like being on stage, but the promotion side of it, no way. Oh, I can't stand so, it. You'll know him when you see him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like on the mountain, you know, like all these followers behind. In front yeah, of you. that's what you would like. I would you? like. I basically want to be Jesus. Yeah, that is exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no Jesus complex God complex or Pan if I could be Pan yeah. the goat guy if you can smell a wafty goat mm. you go oh, yeah, there he's he back in town he's there he's yeah. here he's close he'll be fucking our daughters anytime <laughs> and he'll put a show on at 8 that's what he usually does <laughs> yeah. well, Adam Vincent well thank you for coming to Comedy Defects and I'll see you probably in Edinburgh uh, thank you Winter thank you pleasure. very much take care man And that was episode 43 with Adam Vincent, the co-writer of The Third Leg and comedian in his own right. He's taking a show to the Quadrant, which is going to be the first two days of the Brighton Fringe. And that is in the Quadrant at 6pm, and that's called Adam Vincent, The Scared and Lonely Tour. He's also taking that show up to the Edinburgh Fringe. The different title for that is How to Not Kill Yourself While Living in the Suburbs. And that is in Espionage at quarter past four. It might be a different show by the time he gets up there, just working it out at the moment, putting it all together. Go find him on Facebook, go follow him on Twitter, and go see him live, because he needs you there to bounce the ideas and jokes off. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. I really enjoyed that episode. If you like this podcast, you can follow us on Twitter over there, at The Comedy Defect. If you want to follow me, it's at Winter Phonander. I'm also reading that Guinness Encyclopedia, and the jokes for that are going up under the title, The Book Dad Read, and the Twitter handle for that is at Guinness Jokes. I don't talk for too much longer because I've got a lot to do today. I've got a gig tonight which I'm going to be emceeing, so I'm going to be preparing for that. I've got a few other things to do, like sketches and things I'm going to edit. So they'll be coming up online very soon. I'll show them, I'll put them on the Facebook group, the Comedy Defect Facebook group, where you can like them, share them, enjoy them, tell your friends, why not? If you want to support this podcast, you can go to Patreon, type in The Comedy Defect, and you could donate as little as a pound a month or as much as you feel this podcast is worth. But if you can't donate, that's fine. Just share your favourite episode. Leave us a nice, honest review on iTunes or Podbean. And we're also on YouTube there as well. Comment and share your favourite episode from there too. That's it for now from this episode of the Comedy Defect Podcast. We'll see you next week for episode 44 with a very funny Tom Young.